Good morning. It's before 1030 a.m. on May 19th, 2021. I want to make a brief statement about some very disturbing events that have occurred. As you know, I've already posted publicly how it was my intention to commission a task force regarding radio frequency and broadband. And one of the things that would be necessary for an effective effectuation of that task force would be an evaluation of standards that would be involved with anything having to do with electromagnetic frequency, um, access to bandwidth, as well as any sort of industrial technologies or techniques that would be necessary for the proper application of techniques or processes involving radio frequency manipulation or access to broadband or bandwidth. We're in a situation where some very disturbing events have been occurring, and I have been on the record in some of them, and I will continue to be on the record in others. Um, I will say right now that I believe the executive order passed by alleged or written and uh, attempted for promulgation by alleged President Joseph Biden is a national and international security threat, and I believe it is absolutely directly materially relevant in regards to the crimes that are occurring in the disputed territories of the Middle East alternatively known as Israel and Palestine, and that I will be pursuing action insofar as I can. It would have been nice had there been some collegiality to have already engaged a process to have an injunction put against that executive order pending criminal charges. On the other hand, there's another matter that I need to speak to directly today. Uh, it's understood that on Monday, the Federal Register published several notices specifically concerning the Department of Defense including in regards to matters alleged to be about counterintelligence. I've been aware of, for over a year and a half, the specific scheme that has been ongoing in the United States that I believe was authorized under the Obama administration, wherein there was a comprehensive effort to intentionally engage a period of time where people were allowed to believe that they were being recruited as intelligence, with an understanding that in the process of being recruited as intelligence domestically, specifically targeting various communities, including communities around racial and ethnic lines, with an understanding that allegedly they would be assisting in some sort of foreign affairs or foreign assistance effort, and that they would be covered in intentionally engaging in acts of sabotage, including industrial sabotage, with an understanding that at some point down the road, there's going to be a flip. And when the flip occurred, that somebody else was going to be blamed for the crimes they actually committed, and they were going to be able to be availed of the benefits of being identified as counterintelligence. I believe this was specifically orchestrated under the Obama administration, under programs allegedly connected to the Defense Intelligence Agency, and that in the course of so doing, what they actually did was intentionally sabotage community efforts specifically connected to African-American communities. And I say communities. It's not a monolith throughout the country, as well as creating some sort of pecking order concerning intentionally dividing and racializing dynamics between those identifying themselves as black or African American and those identifying themselves as Latino or, in other cases, Latinx. Uh, there's already been a long-standing concern in this country where there's a very significant regard that needs to be uh, understood in the manners in which communities self-identify themselves. I never was a part, for instance, of any efforts involving a Latino community when it came to organizing. The people with whom I was originally involved with organizing, including for political rights and including for a stake in the political system through an electoral campaign, did not identify themselves as Latino. Their understanding of their self-identification had other roots. I'm not going to disrespect them by trying to put on another moniker in order to curry political favor at this time, but I will acknowledge that ongoing at this time frame is a further perpetuation of a completely racist and racialized scheme that has been allowed to masquerade as if it is some sort of homeland security or national security paradigm. It has to do with acts of domestic cyber terrorism and a refusal to actually take into account considerations regarding actual cybersecurity protocols that have been intentionally manipulated and sabotaged for going on the last 10 years. December 12, 2019 was the fifth anniversary of a major, major cybersecurity report commissioned by Congress and actually delivered to Congress. Five years before December 12, 2019 was December 12 of 2014. I contend the People's Republic of China absolutely knew that. 
I contend that the executive order allegedly about cybersecurity 18 months after is very disingenuous. Not only is it very disingenuous, it reveals ulterior motives that need to be addressed immediately, especially in consideration of what is going on in the Middle East and what is, I understand, an effort to try to contrive and exacerbate pre-existing concerns in other countries in order to create futures to swap out here. There are a variety of people alleging that they have some sort of political situation to attend to or some sort of political positioning based upon a manipulation of the electoral process, as well as people in business and finance using their kickbacks from the government as cover, trying to dump a lot of really, really, really bad deals, deals that should never have been allowed to happen, deals they knew were bad, and deals they intentionally engaged in, hoping that right now, during this time frame, they'd be able to leverage it to accomplish political goals. If you have a political goal, and you're using the economic system, there's nothing wrong with that. Ownership of the means of production, self-interest in understanding one's position in the polity and economy is essential for democracy. But it is completely disingenuous to sell your people a dog and pony show while behind the scenes you're actually orchestrating increased subordinated indebtedness. It's the same thing they did with the European Commission around the time that the people of Greece were in the streets protesting around the time that other peoples throughout Europe were in the streets protesting, around the time other peoples throughout the world were in the streets protesting, and not just against police brutality. There was a greater sophistication and understanding of how police brutality and bad bond deals and flips are intimately connected. If somebody agreed to give you some political expediency by leveraging one against the other, well, you're no better than the people that are about to get busted big time. And if you continue to throw in with them, they're going to make you pay and hide like they have been since they first founded their secret societies during and after the Civil War. Their insurance scheme was illegal, unconstitutional, and unacceptable then. It still is. I say this specifically because last summer there was a modification to the National Institutes of Standards Tech, uh, Testing in regards to the American Society of Non-Destructive Investigation um, concerning standards related specifically to testing of personnel that are involved with teaching facilities for people that need to learn NDT and or that need to be able to demonstrate some proficiency after a period of training in order to be able to get the experience they need in actual field application to be able to themselves become inspectors and or to use those technologies for necessary good. Presumably, we're supposed to be dealing with infrastructure investment, presumably. But we've had a need for dealing effectively with infrastructure investment for over 15 years. This has been well known, but it's been allowed to be leveraged and move further and further and further down the kickback pipeline until they've created a situation where not only is it a hazard to workers to be engaged in this situation, but it makes people that agree to participate complicit with serious, significant, unacceptable crimes. Crimes that necessarily call upon action, all means necessary to protect one's people from what the implications are. Now in 2017, I went through a period where I contacted a number of organizations that alleged to be involved with processes of industrial inspection around the world including major, major infrastructure projects, some of which were private and some of which were national in scope, and let them know that there were significant problems with what was going on in relation to their hiring practices and how it was being manipulated by opportunists that were engaged in illegal contract bidding concurrent to people's efforts to try to acquire a job legitimately. So when the standards got changed last year to institutionalize a situation regarding standards connected to industrial inspection that allowed for subordinated indebtedness as a replacement for mentorship, I reject those standards. I have, uh, in my experience, performed one examination using that standard. At the time, I was not uh, apprised forthrightly and directly beforehand of the full implications of the specific facility of concern by the time I had completed the examination. 
which was significant. I've been apprised of significant matters. We need to attend to those matters directly. You don't get to just unilaterally decide that you like all of the risk metrics associated with a place you intentionally sabotage over and over again for years and years and years and years. And you're going to keep it that way. And you're going to use the model you experimented on then in order to try to normalize people in other contexts, including in contexts that are allowing for enticement involving drugs, involving promiscuity, involving prostitution, involving intentionally imposed poverty, or involving legitimization of acts of political retaliation that involve weapons. It's not acceptable. It's not going to happen. We're coming up on a year since they tried to get away with that uh, revision to their personnel testing standards. I encourage you to make public your acknowledgement of how unacceptable those standards are. Anybody that's actually concerned about infrastructure development understands that it is a means by which to give your community and your people quality, effective, durable investments of their time, energy, and expertise in creating structures and facilities for their community that can accrue in value, that can provide jobs and livelihoods, not only in the construction, but in maintenance. And it is in our capacity to maintain that which we initially develop that we have fallen far sh short in the United States. It doesn't matter whether you're talking about public sector employment or whether you're talking about private sector contributions to public goods, public works, public facilities. And from there, getting into an understanding of what it means to actually be able to own the means of our own production, including as private property, rather than being turned into human chattel that's being allowed to be characterized as an asset of somebody else that won't even fully disclose what their business interests are. It's unacceptable. That's not the kind of infrastructure we need, and we don't need anybody in alleged leadership that's going to try to pull wool over our eyes while that's what they set up. I want to thank you for calling me back. I'm going to conclude this message right here. Again, I encourage you to make public, as public as possible, your full repudiation of the standards updates that were issued last July in consideration of testing of personnel for non-destructive testing facilities, and to also let people know what other recommendations that you would believe could actually contribute to a meaningful enterprise in this country around actually dealing with infrastructure. But at the same time, if you're trying to hedge your industrial expertise in some sort of schematology where you're hoping to be availed of the implications of those standards at a financial level, including a level when it comes to global investment, then there will be necessarily a means by which to hold you accountable and I contend the burden of proof on you is very significant. You should already have applied what was necessary to make sure people in your organizations were appropriately apprised of the implications of making sure their workers' safety was made a priority, that you have qualified and competent people in the decision-making positions, and you weren't just leveraging the possibility of being able to get insurance coverage on filling some other kind of marketing quota.